Innovation. 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 Public innovation. Innovation. My name is Stephen H. Isak. I am the Director of the Efficiency and Charter Unit in the Office of the Prime Minister, the outfit that is uh, going to be responsible for uh, this whole uh, workshop. Uh, first and foremost, may I uh, kindly welcome each and all. Uh, we have this time around uh, endeavoured to invite colleagues from all of the regional councils. We have also invited colleagues from uh, different offices, ministries and agencies. Um, the reason why we are doing it like this, colleagues, is basically to one, engage the national government as well as engage the sub-national government. Public sector innovation is to a large extent uh, known throughout the world. Uh, also within the sub-region, our colleagues in South Africa are running public sector innovation programs for the last 13 years. Innovation takes place through various forms and I am absolutely convinced that each one of us would have had something to do with innovation at some point. So it's not uncharted territory, uh, whether it is in terms of praxis or whether it is in terms of uh, conceptualization. Therefore, we have invited our uh, colleague from South Africa, Dr. Belinda Kettle, who will then lead the facilitation around public sector innovation for today and uh, tomorrow to share with us what the thinking is, what the theory is, and what the practice is in South Africa. Now, she's not only going to talk about the theory of public sector innovation because she is directly involved with our colleagues of the Department of Public uh, Service and Administration, the Center for Public Sector Innovation in South Africa for the last couple of years, where she is involved as part of their capacity development program but also involved in various ways through the annual public sector innovation conference, the annual public sector innovation awards uh, in South Africa in particular. It's a new program that we are introducing in the Namibian public service, formally if you will, and therefore we would want to start at the, at the beginning of raising awareness, going on to capacity development, and as we finish over two and a half days from now, three days from now, uh, we will be talking about the way forward and what the implications are for practical application beyond the two and a half days uh, training session. Because we are foreseeing uh, a role for each one of you in your respective jurisdictions in, in terms of the mandates that you are responsible for and in terms of the functions that you are responsible for. Uh, you to your principles, uh, whether they are political or administrative, uh, back home, wherever you are, whichever ministry, office, agency, on government uh, projects and programs that happens uh, at event to also then inform the general public what government is doing. Now, uh, colleagues, in terms of the objectives, I'm not going to go into the background. I've, I've mentioned a bit of why this particular workshop is taking place, the fact that it is a new uh, program that we are introducing, and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to uh, talk to the substance and the definition and the semantics of what public sector innovation is. Uh, that we will uh, take care of as part of the next session throughout the day and the session then tomorrow with uh, Belinda. Uh, safe to say that objective one is one for us to um, establish and then to launch the innovation program so that we can entrench the culture and practice of public sector innovation in the Namibian public service. This is also in line with what is espoused in the African Charter on the values and principles of public service and administration. 
particularly as it relates to good governance and then to uh, public administration in general, uh, as well as on the need for effective and efficient public service delivery. We are also aiming, colleagues, to raise awareness on the need for, that's now public sector innovation, as well as the benefits of public sector innovation. What we are also trying to do with this particular workshop is to uh, locate, if you will, the discourse on public sector innovation, uh, to locate that central to public sector improvement to put it as, a, as part of the pivot in continuous public service improvement or improved public service delivery. Uh, best of all, with this workshop, we are aiming to share with you the tools and the techniques and the mechanisms that will help us all in fostering public sector innovation in the Namibian public service meaning that we would want you to have the tools so that we can collectively inculcate public sector innovation in the Namibian public sector. And then last but not least, we would want to create an enabling environment that will help us as we move forward in terms of changing our mindsets from this is how we used to do it in the past to what is possible now, how can we improve on what we have, what can we do differently, uh, so that we can, uh, as part of the mindset change, also work around action learning and how we can incorporate, incorporate those lessons in our public sector uh, delivery improvement initiatives. Those were the objectives that we have with this workshop. What we expect, the expected outcomes at the end of the three days. One, that we would have a shared understanding and a shared appreciation of the role and place of public sector innovation and how that impacts on continuous service improvement continuous public service improvement. We are also looking at, by the end of the three days, we are also looking at establishing an informal network. I mentioned we had the first workshop in May, attended by uh, various other officers, ministries and agencies. Some represented here, others not. <coughs> Together with that group of the first training session in May, and this group, we would like to establish an informal practitioners network so that wherever you are, ministry, office, agency, whichever region you find yourself in, that we can have a virtual, if need be, network where we can support each other in promoting, discussing, talking about, innovating, and being busy on public sector innovation so that you would not be uh, left to your own uh, devices, if I can put it that way, out there, isolated wherever you are, but that you would have uh, a community of practice, uh, people that you can talk to, people that you can relate to on public sector innovation. Uh, we would also want to discuss with you because we are looking at running the first public sector innovation conference in 2015. So we would like to have you on board uh, in whatever capacity that you can uh, come on board, whether it is through advice, whether it is through uh, one or the other role that you can play in terms of organizing, in terms of getting the logistics in, into place, and in terms of even having a, a practical role uh, as and when the conference unfolds. We are also looking at starting a public sector innovation awards, or beginning that, or launching that in 2016. Uh, we would want to discuss with you, that's on the last day, uh, what your possible role can can be, and as part of that discussion, or, or as part of what will then uh, influence, or as part of what will inform that discussion on the last day, 
Uh, we will uh, later this afternoon welcome one of our comrades from South Africa, from the Center for Public Sector Innovation, who will come and share with us on the last day uh, what their experiences are as far as public sector innovation is con concerned for the last 13 odd years. And not just the South African experience, but the sub-regional experience, as well as the African experience. Uh, because they are championing the All Africa Public Sector Innovations Award uh, at the level of the African Union Commission. So, uh, we are looking at a very rich and diverse uh, background in terms of what obtains as far as public sector innovation is concerned uh, within the sub-region and, and elsewhere. Uh, and, and all of that really is aimed at enhancing our own understanding of public sector innovation, uh, enhancing our own sense of what, what is happening out there, and then hopefully uh, that we can also learn in the process of what, as we uh, begin this journey of public sector innovation in Namibia or to, to, to get the sense of what is possible uh, within our um, sphere of influence. So we are looking at, in terms of the expected outcome then, those, 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 those possible roles uh, that, that we need to then discuss. Uh, even to the extent of perhaps setting up a project team and, and, and so on and so forth, particularly for the conference and for the innovation uh, awards initiative. Uh, what we will do is at the end of the three days, we will revisit these objectives and these expected outcomes so that we can collectively gauge whether we have achieved any, if not all, of them as part of the discourse and so forth. And then it also helps us as, as colleagues overall uh, that we start to network. But my name is Melinda, and I know Stephen is very good at doing very formal introductions, and I know it's a doctor. Please just, Melinda is absolutely fine. No formalities needed. Melinda is absolutely fine. And I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role as the Director of Public Sector Innovation at the Public Sector Awards Committee. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very enjoy the passion that Stephen and his team have for innovation. And as part of the team at, uh, at our Center for Public Service Innovation, where we really drive innovation with lots of passion and lots of energy in our public service, we, we really try to support Stephen and his team and, and be part of, of creating awareness and sharing the excitement and the opportunities that there are with innovation in the public sector. So I come from the beautiful town of Cape Town, yes, where we we we're having exactly the same weather as you here on top of it. It's all grey and you know cloudy. Uh, but it is really wonderful for me to be here again and I'm excited to spend the next three days with you trying to investigate and explore and find out more and more about innovation, about how innovation works in the public sector, about what you might already know that you just didn't realise that you already know about innovation and to decide with you what are we going to do about innovation? What are we going to do about <coughs> this thing that we're calling innovation? There's a workshop that you're, you know, that you're attending over the next few days. Why is innovation such a big deal? Why is innovation so important that Stephen and his team are hosting this training session and creating awareness and I'm going to talk about a conference and I'm going to talk about a national awards program? What's the big deal? Why is it so important? What impact does it have? Is it a is it a strategic priority? Is it a political priority? Is it a developmental priority? Is it a human resource priority? What, why is it such a big deal? And that's what we'd like to explore with you. So I am definitely not here to lecture you, although I do like to make lots, you know, so my, my job is good for me because I need to do that. I am here to help enable, to help facilitate your discussions around innovation in your context. And that's certainly the Namibian context, but it's even more specific than that. It's in the context of your ministry, of your office, of your agency, of your region. Innovation doesn't look the same everywhere. Innovation is sometimes small and sometimes big. It's sometimes very quick and short term, like in a few weeks. Other times it takes 20 years to get an innovation through. Public sector is not as easy, I want to say, as innovating in the corporate world or in the private sector. 
and we need to be realistic around the public sector and the, the dynamics that we work with in the public sector, and we need to share our realities of that um, with each other. So the first thing I'd like to explain to you is that you are going to do lots more talking than me over the next two days, or at least I sincerely hope that you are going to be doing more talking than me. Because I can't generate new knowledge with you around innovation unless you are sharing what you already know with the people that are at your tables. Does that make sense? So you need to use your own experience and use your own thinking. Even if you've never considered the word public sector innovation before, we're going to try and see where that fits within your role. And I know you all have very, very diverse different roles. And the reason I explain that is because that's actually the methodology that we use around innovation. You can't share innovation with people in a glory way. You have to share innovation with people in an innovative way. <coughs> so if you did it like a traditional training course, that would be the opposite of what is innovation. So we need to do it in an innovative way so that you don't fall asleep and that you stay awake and that you stay engaged and that this is worthwhile for you to be spending your time here. And at the end of every day, you go, you I didn't know I, I knew so much about innovation, and I'm excited to see how we can plug this in when I get back home. Okay. Now to do that, you are going to be doing lots of talking, most of your talking, with the people that are sitting at your tables. And I'm not sure if you knew that when you chose which table you're going to sit at. But now you can't divorce it, you are already married. Because you are already sitting there. Okay. So I know Stephen did do very formal introductions and we did go around the whole room. But I'd like to do a little informal introduction and, and I'd like to ask you at your tables to, to quickly just say good morning to each other again, even if you did say good morning earlier, and smile at each other and pretend to be very excited. <laughs> so I certainly don't want to give you a definition of innovation, but let's just talk about the idea and where it where it's from and, and why it's such a big deal, and then we'll have some discussions at your tables. But innovation itself, just as the English word, innovation, that's not new. That's been around for decades and decades. And innovation, the word innovate, or to be innovative is the competency, is the skill you have as a person, has also been around for years and years and years and years and years. That's not new. What's, what's relatively new, and when I say relatively, I mean maybe 20 or 30 years new, okay, uh, from, the late, from the 90s, the late 90s, is that there has been quite a big drive um, from academia, from policy, from public sector practitioners across the world uh, around public sector innovation. And public sector innovation meaning something that must be different to what's not public sector. So innovation in the private sector, or innovation in small business, or innovation in entrepreneurship, or innovation in communities. So there are certain things around innovation that, that are quite unique in a public sector environment and there's been lots of research around that. There are many institutes and universities that have got little units around public sector innovation. There's certainly many governments uh, that have whole directorates uh, on public sector innovation. I know in South Africa we have our own one, which Stephen has mentioned to you, within our Ministry of Public Service and Administration, we have the Center for Public Service Innovation, and it's been running for 13 years. So what I'm trying to tell you is that not just in South Africa, all over the show, from first world countries to more developing countries, there has been purposeful thinking, writing, researching, conferencing, talking, observing, and rewarding okay, of something called public sector innovation. That means that in, in some governments, not all, they are putting resources towards this. They are paying people salaries. They are paying for events. They are paying for research. They are supporting projects to drive this thing called public sector innovation. So what do I mean when I say drive with my big words? I mean that there's, you know Red Bull? You know the drink Red Bull? Yes. So that there's Red Bull behind this thing called public sector innovation. Because if you leave it to its own devices, innovation always happens, but people don't see it. You know, you'll walk straight past it and you'll say, wow, that was a successful project. But nobody says, hey, that was a successful innovation project. Does it make sense? So innovation is always there. It has always been there. It's just about learning how do we look at it with new lenses or how do we look at our successes and our lessons, in fact, even our failures. Because many innovations fail a few times before they become successful. And when we drive this in our public sector, what do we get? 
We get improvement. We get things that are better. We get things that are faster. We get things that are more efficient. We get things that are more uh, participatory. We get things that deliver to our strategic priorities. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So when you drive this thing, which we haven't even defined yet, called public sector innovation, when you drive it, what it means is you're putting your money where your mouth is, and you're clarifying it that it, is, that it has a purpose, that it is a strategic priority in, in, in our sort of area of work, and that could be different sectors, different government departments and ministries, and that we are recognizing it. And innovation itself, just the word innovate, it's a very sexy word. You know what I mean by sexy? It's, it's got positive connotations. It doesn't have negative connotations with people. So it's a very attractive word uh, for people to associate with. So things, for example, that are, that are done in, in other countries, and they're not rules, they're just examples of things, is that there's a policy framework for innovation, that there are measurable indicators for innovation. I mean, what is innovation? How do we measure it? What does it look like? What must count if we want to know what innovation is? that we resource innovation through different sources, through our own internal funds, through public-private partnerships, through sponsorships with private sector, with, through um, partnerships with universities, but we sponsor and we drive this thing called innovation. We also train people and build capacity on innovation, and that's what Stephen and his team are doing right here today. Okay? This is our second workshop. You create awareness around innovation, okay? and you reward and recognize innovation. So these are the kinds of things which we can learn about, we can benchmark, we can see what's happening in other, in other countries, but we can absolutely first look at what are we already doing in Namibia about this. Because many teams in different places to do with different projects will already be innovating and will already be documenting that and will already be rewarding and recognizing that. And that's part of the process. So we're not saying Namibia doesn't know about innovation and we're not saying Namibia doesn't do innovation. It's absolutely the opposite. We just want to perhaps polish or tweak or slightly craft how you are identifying it, that we're all clear on the same page, and how we are uh, creating it and how we are purposefully you know, planning for and driving innovation in all of our different objectives and all of our different programs and projects. Okay. So to start you off with some thinking, I have a question for you. And my question is, when you think of the word innovation, just innovation, what comes to mind? What do you think of? How would you describe innovation to someone else? When I say the word innovation, what do you think of? That's my question. I'd like you to talk to whoever's at your tables. So not across the whole room, just at your little round table. Can you chat to each other? You don't have to write anything down, you can if you want to. But just chat for me, quick, quick, like for five minutes. What do you think of when you think of the word or when you hear the word innovation? What are the words that come to mind? Have a quick chat for me, five minutes, quick, quick. So I know you might not be finished with all your discussions and I don't want to be rude, if you still have things to say you're welcome to chat, but let's get a little bit of feedback. Okay. So transformation, it's, when you go through a number of these things, transformation has got a very specific implication. Transformation is more than just the word change. Did any of your groups, is this loud, is it working? Did any of your groups think of the word change? Some of you? Okay. So transformation is more than just change. Transformation implies that when something changes, it can't ever go back to what it was before. You following me? You know the story of the butterfly? When, it, you know, when the little worm goes into the pupa and then it comes out as the butterfly. It can never go back to being a little caterpillar again. That's what I always think of when I think of transformation. On and off and on and off. Am I moving too much? <laughs> All right, so when you think of transformation, now let's link this to innovation. So what we're saying with innovation is that when we innovate, we need to change things so fundamentally that nobody is ever allowed to go back to the old lazy way of doing things. Does that sound fair? In, and I know those are Belinda's words, those are not your words. But that's sort of what transformation tells me. It's almost, it's not part of the deal, it's not negotiable when we deal with innovation, that people can pretend to do new things for a little while, and then when they've got their award, then they go back to doing it the old way. That's not part of innovation. So this tells me a second very important thing, is that when we measure innovation, we have to measure something to do with sustainability. 
Can, am I allowed to imply that? Can I write it down here? So I'm going to say measure and sustainable. So I've got measure and I've got sustainable. And I know I added those, you didn't, but I just want to catch them so you don't miss them. So that tells me that if something has to be transformational when we innovate, which it does, okay, absolutely does, you're 100% right. It's one of the criteria in most of the uh, public sector innovation awards programs that do run across the world in different countries. One of the criteria is that it is transformational. It has to be sustainable. So this means that we have to also measure our innovations, which means someone's got to count things, number of this, number of that, percentage of this, Brand value of that, you know, those kind of things, so that you can measure it. And one of the elements that you need to measure is whether this innovation will be sustainable if the project stops, or if the person is no longer there, or if government no longer funds it. Is it going to be sustainable? Can it carry on living into the future on its own? Then you know you have a real innovation. That's quite big. Fantastic. So thank you for my first input for transformation. And now I'm going to close my cookie and put it down because now we're going to have a long discussion. This is my pet project with, uh, with innovation. So creativity. So when we think of the word creativity, did some of the other groups think of that? Yeah. To be creative, you need to be creative in order to innovate. Absolutely. Okay, good. It's one of the first words. Um, the, the first two words most people give me when they think about innovation, they first give me the word new. Something must be new or different. And the second word they give me is something to do with creativity, which is great. So let's just think, what is creativity? Creativity has got something to do with generating new ideas. Right. So we're going back to creativity. So now we're saying creativity is a big deal. When I say, when you think of innovation, what do you think of? You said, I think of creativity. Awesome. Now here's the big thing. Creativity is not innovation. Creativity is one thing. Innovation is another thing. Are you following me? I know it's two different English words, so it should sound like it makes sense. But you can never, ever, 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 ever have innovation before you've had. So innovation, Stephen and team, is dead in the water, dead, kaput, unless you are able to generate creative thinking in the teams that face the daily challenges. The coal-facing teams, you know what I mean when I say coal-facing? The teams that are absolutely busy with the, 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 the front face of whatever your department or agency delivers. Those teams have got to be able to think on their feet in the moment when they're problem solving about being creative. When you want the solutions to our challenges in government, it honestly doesn't help asking the most senior person or a politician. They will answer you, absolutely, with lots of big words. What helps when you're looking for an innovation is asking the people that are actually working with that particular frustration or problem on a daily basis. Are you following me? If you want the answers, they're already there. We don't need a consultant. <laughs> I know we need consultants for lots of things. I don't want to say it's bad. I'm a consultant. But when you're looking for the answers in the public sector, you usually don't need to invest in lots of research and development. You just need to ask the people that are already working where that problem is being experienced. And they will say to you, if just this could change, if just that could change, if we could do this in a different way, if we change the steps of the process. Now, I'm not saying all the things they suggest are possible. And I'm not saying that all the things that they suggest are, will be resourced. But it, does it give you like five different creative possible solutions for a problem? Absolutely. Does it offer then the opportunity for looking at who can we partner with or where can we look for extra funding or where can we find extra resources or how can we do this? Absolutely. Does it start off like light, like ignite your innovation process? 100%. You cannot get to innovation unless you are able to generate creativity. Does it make sense? You with me? All right. Now, creativity means, and now I want to go back to the word, which I wrote here, creativity. Creativity means that people are allowed to think. Creativity means that people have time to think. Creativity means that when people are thinking, they're allowed to speak about their ideas or throw their ideas around or make suggestions of ideas. And that when they do that, they're not going to be cut off or put down or shut up. Does it make sense? And to be very honest, in, in the public sector, and I mustn't, I mustn't talk about Namibia because I have never worked in your public service. I've only worked in our public service in South Africa. But generally in public service culture, creativity is not something that people encourage every day because creativity exposes non-performance. 
Creativity exposes where people are lazy. Creativity exposes where things are negative. Creativity exposes where things are not working well. Not so? So when you allow lots of creativity out there, the good ideas come, but with those good ideas, it shines a light on where it's bad. Are you following me? And that's not always allowed. So what am I going to tell you about creativity in the public sector? You've got to choose your battles. Do you, do you know what I mean when I say that? You've got to choose your battles very strategically. You can't be creative all day, every day, you know, seven days a week. <laughs> Other than that, I think you'll have a big headache. You've got to say, well, how close is this to my priorities? Is this in an area where I have enough power to influence what's going on here? Is the impact of this thing that I'm suggesting big enough that it's going to solve the problem? You following me? And only then do you make a wise choice of whether you open your mouth or not. You can't just open it like a machine gun all the time. <laughs> all right, then you, then you get a bit of a label. So there, there are a lot of techniques and tools around generating creative thinking in public sector environments, in, in whether it's a small team or a whole big ministry or a big department, um, where creativity hasn't necessarily always been part of your culture. There's a lot of research and tools and techniques that have been written up where it is already working where they've tried different things. From quiet things, you know, quiet things is where somebody doesn't have to say it, they can write it down or they can email it to someone, to very funky, creative kind of workshops with brainstorming and ideas and you bring in experts and, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a wide variety of tools and techniques that are out there, and we can talk about some of them, to do with how do we generate creative ideas in an environment which is sometimes a little bit stale. Do you know what the word stale means? Like old braid. <laughs> stale like old bread, where you have had this problem for a long time and wherever there have been ideas, people have tried to suggest them but they've always been shot down and now people don't even make suggestions anymore. When you have those environments, which are really, really negative environments, those environments are like screaming out for an innovation to come and solve the problem, but nobody will say anything anymore because they've learned that if you say anything, you know, it keeps you down. So there's lots of, of good techniques and there's lots of research out there, there's lots of best practices. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to think, well, how can I think about this differently? Because if I don't think about it differently, I can't come up with different solutions. Okay. If you're thinking about it in the same way that, you, that, that sort of caused the problem, you're going to come up with the same solutions that maintain the problem. And that's the difference. So can you see that a huge part of innovation is just the thinking part? Does it make sense? Creativity is thinking. Yeah. Thinking, so thinking and thinking and coming up with different ideas. Okay, good. So creativity was a big part of what we talk about with innovation. Let's go back to my question. My question was, when you think of the word innovation, what comes to mind? So I'm going to write your words there. It was adding value and it was something to do with implementation. Implementation. All right. So let's just talk through that because those are huge parts of what we call the steps of innovation or the model of innovation. Okay. So if we've had lots of creativity and we've come up with funky ideas and now we're going to take one of those ideas or more than one and we're going to start implementing it. When we talk about innovation, one of the first words that people tell me that they've heard about is something called piloting. You know, like a pilot project. Have you heard of those? You must do. Now, anything that's called a pilot project, I'm telling you that's got to do with innovation, even if you didn't call it innovation at the time when you piloted it. So think back in your history of how many years you've been around and think of how many pilot projects haven't come past you. As soon as you hear the word pilot anything, there's an innovation behind it somewhere. Okay? Piloting means what? Piloting means we try something out in a little bit to test whether it's going to work and what kind of impact it's going to have before we just roll it out everywhere. Not so? So anything, whether it's a new um, IT system or a new um, you know, policy or a new... Uh, process of doing something, usually, especially in government, we pilot it in one department or in one unit, and then we test it out, and then we fix it up, and then we roll it out some more. Not so? Okay. So piloting is what, the, the piloting is the word we often talk about in practice. In innovation terms, in sexy innovation language, we talk about a pilot is actually what we call an incubator. Have you heard of the word incubator? <laughs> so we call it an innovation incubator because it's a little hub where you're trying something out that small to see how it would work so that it can be upscaled. You heard the word upscaled, rolled out, upscaled. Okay. Now we're talking about implementation. So one of the criteria when we are looking at innovation, I told you the other one was sustainability. 
One of the other criteria that you will find in most innovation awards programs, whether it's local ones or across the whole African continent or EU related, doesn't matter where, one of the, the criteria is that the innovation that was implemented must be upscalable. The innovation, it might have worked where you did it, that's awesome. But what can we learn from what you guys did that can make this general enough that other people can pick it up and try it in a different sector or a different region or a different country? Does it make sense? There must be an element of it's adding value and it can add value in more than one context. It can add value in Namibia, it can add value in South Africa, it can add value at a regional level, it can add value at a central national government level. Does it make sense? So there's something to do with this implementation that says it's not only that you must implement your idea, just the idea on its own is only creative thinking. When you start implementing the idea, you get into innovation. But it's not good enough just to implement it, you have to implement it so that it adds value and that we can upscale that value. We've got to be able to roll it out. So one of the criteria, and certainly in South Africa, and, and I know in others, but I'll speak from my own experience, is that when lots of different government departments nominate their projects for our national awards program, and they've got awesome ones. I mean, they are making differences with babies in clinics and kids at schools and farmers in rural areas. And I mean, it's just amazing stuff they're doing. And then we say to them, but sorry, you don't qualify because your idea is not yet upscalable. It's an awesome idea, keep doing it. But maybe in two or three years, you'll actually get to the place where it is upscalable. You're still in the learning phase. You're still in the, in the incubating phase. Does it make sense? You've got that to do with adding value and implementation. All right, fantastic. So let me take you back to my question. My question was, when you think of the word innovation, what comes to mind? When you think of the word innovation, what comes to mind? Efficiency. Yes. Okay, so efficiency. So you're saying, when we innovate, we mustn't just innovate for the sake of innovating. We must innovate because it actually makes something better. It makes something faster, it makes something more cost effective, it makes something, you know, sexier, it makes it more efficient, it makes it more effective, it must make it more something. Okay. So now what we're talking about is the difference between innovation and improvement. Innovation and improvement. You can innovate without improving anything. You following me? You can innovate without improving anything. And that is not the point of innovation, and that's what, you, what you're talking about. That was your adding value bit. Okay. So in many private sector com uh, companies, private sector, okay, not public sector, they come up with lots of gadgets and gizmos and you know apps like on your iPad and your phones, now there's apps for everything. Sometimes they design these things and they put them out there and we buy them, but they don't really add any value. Once you've tried it, you realize, ah, no, that was a waste of money. Or it says it does that, but it doesn't really do that. You following me? Okay. Even if you think of silly things like washing powders, I know that's a really like a, like a woman's frame of reference, but you know, this washing powder will tell you it does something different to that washing powder. When you use them, they're both the same. Mm -hmm. okay? they, they, there's improvement, but there's no innovation. So when we are looking at the criteria for innovation in the public sector, which is not the same as criteria for innovation in the private sector, in the public sector, there must be innovation with some sort of improvement. Innovation with improvement. You'll see there's a whole little model in the book there um, which shows you the, the, those, those dynamics. Now the big thing to do with efficiency was the specific word you used. Efficiency is one form of improvement. It's not the only form, but it's one form. It's a big one. And it'll be a big one for Stephen and his team because it's what drives them. It's efficiency in government uh, processes and systems. Um, efficiency is trying to see are we using our resources in the most efficient way when we deliver? Because you can still deliver, but in a less efficient way. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Effectiveness is measuring something else. Effectiveness is saying, are we doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how much money we're spending. Are we doing the right thing? Okay. And neither of them are wrong. They are just examples of what would happen because of your innovation. You following me? Now, there are a number of things that can happen because of innovations, and I'm going to take this opportunity to clarify them with you. We talked about that it must add value, we talked about that we must measure, and we've now actually got an example of a measurement which is efficiency. So now it's telling me your ears are right for measuring and understanding that innovation must have some kind of impact, is what I'm hearing you say, like efficiency is an impact or adding value is an impact. Now let's talk about measuring. When you measure anything, even if you want to measure how much weight you gained while you were in Swakopmund for the three days because you're eating all the time, okay, <laughs> It means that somebody has got to take measurements. Not so? 
Like you've got to stand on the bathroom scale before you left home and then you've got to stand on the bathroom scale all, each day and, all, and the last day when you're here in Swakopmund and you've got to measure how many kilograms you've get, weight you've gained while you've been on a training course. You with me? That means someone's got to measure. So as soon as you tell me that there's measurement in the public service, all right, what I'm definitely going to tell you is there's extra resources that are needed because measuring is a job on its own. Measuring is a big job. Measuring doesn't just happen while you're doing other things. I'm not saying you always have to appoint a specific new person, but of the persons that you have in your team, one or more than them has to have measurement responsibility. And sometimes that's why we off, honestly get consultants in because we just don't have that capacity and that time. So as soon as you're measuring an innovation, someone's got to count things. Number of this, RAND value of that, date of this, turnaround time of that, you know, ratios of things. Does it make sense? Someone's got to count. Someone's got to write them down. Someone's got to put them into a computer. You've got to, you've got to have the data, otherwise you can't measure. Many, many, many projects and innovations nominate themselves for our awards program back in South Africa. And they, again, I'll tell you, they're brilliant, brilliant, community related, they're really making a difference. And in many of them, we say to them, I'm sorry, but you don't qualify for an award because, and I listen to this, because you started measuring too late. You started measuring too late. Are you following me? So they started with the project, and this is honestly what happens in the public sector. Like nine times out of ten, when I talk to public sector managers where we work in our projects, this is what they say to me. They say to me, but Belinda, when we started the project, we didn't know it was an innovation. So we didn't know we were supposed to start measuring. Only when the project started having a success, then we realized, oh, but this is also an innovation, and then we started measuring. But by then, you're two years down the line, or six months down the line, and you never did what's called a baseline measurement. Do you know what a baseline measurement is? You've got to give me how bad was it before you innovated, so that when you've innovated, you can say, look at the improvement. We are now more efficient. How do I know if you're more efficient if you didn't tell me how efficient you were when you started? You following me? So they can often tell me what their results are now, but they can't give me a comparison. Do you know what a comparison is? This is our results now, but how do I know it's any different from what they were before? Unless you are measuring all the time. So measuring is a schlep. Am I allowed to say that? It's extra work. Is that an innovation doesn't have to be an invention. Do you know the word invent? Invent means it never existed before, and now boom, that's this new thing. Invention is one kind of innovation, but it's a very private sector one. Innovation can absolutely be something that is already there, that you just make better. You make it faster than that. If I don't have evidence that you are making it better, I do not have evidence of your innovation. Does it make sense? So measuring is one of the biggest parts of innovation that a lot of people in the public sector don't realize and are not necessarily geared up for. Do you know what geared up for means? They're not always ready for this big onslaught that hits you. One of the first things that happens when our innovation award winners every year, they win in different categories, the media, the newspapers and the TV channels jump on them and they want to do interviews with them and they come to their project sites, you know, they come to the office and they do like little documentaries. And what the media always asks, I mean the media asks lots of funny questions, but what the media always asks is, what was it like before? You know, and you can't just tell them long stories. You've got to have actual data. You've got to say, it cost this before, now it costs this. Before it took six weeks to get this, now it takes two weeks. Before the queue in the clinic was five hours, now it's one hour. You must be able to give them the data to show and have evidence of your improvement. And that improvement, which is what I want to just elaborate on a little bit around measuring, because that's what we keep talking about, is this thing that you called adding value, somebody else called it efficiency. Those are examples of how we measure those improvements. Now those improvements come in many different forms, but the three that we look for in innovation is we look for outputs, we look for outcomes, and we look for impacts. I'll say them again slowly. In innovation, but also in general in the public sector, but specifically in innovations, we look for three types of improvements, or three different levels of improvements. So you can have an improvement, in other words, your innovation is making a difference, it's, it's having an impact, it's a good thing. And it will have an impact at what we call an output level. Output is something that is immediate and it's tangible. So if I think of mothers that are standing in a clinic with their kids and they're waiting to get their medicines, 
when they can say to you, I used to have to stand here from 6 a.m. in the morning and then I'd get served at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And now they say to you, I come at 6 o'clock in the morning and I'm out of here by 9 o'clock. Then you are giving me an immediate output measurement. So an output is something that is tangible. Do you know what tangible means? I can touch it, I can feel it. And it is immediately, like the minute after your innovation is introduced, the second after your innovation is introduced, I can already see the difference. Then it is an output level improvement. It's immediate. So when you build a house, I can go and touch the house. I can say, yeah, here's the house. I can hand over the keys. That's an output. Does it make sense? Mm. But not everything in the public sector is output. Not everything that you do has an immediate, tangible delivery. Some things in the public sector take time. You know that, eh? Long time. So anything to do with strategies or policies or plans, those kind of things, they take a long time to get to a point where you can start measuring their impact. And those things are called outcomes. Outcome level improvements. So we have outputs. And now we're talking about outcomes. So outcomes are a little bit more long term, a little bit more, they're longer in, in a in period of time than what an output is. Does it make sense? So the output I'll see tomorrow. The outcome I might only see in three months time or six months time. It takes longer to see the impact. It takes longer to measure the difference. And many of us that are related to customers, service, um, where, you, where the thing that you're delivering is not so tangible, but you're trying to make an improvement, like, like business process improvements. You can't see the improvement straight away. You have to wait for a couple of weeks or months before you can see the improvement. You following me? Those are, those are outcome level improvements. You got it? And then there's a third one. There was a third one I mentioned. It was impacts. Do you remember that? Impact? Okay. And impacts are very, 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 very long term. <laughs> like 10 years, 20 years, very long term. So when your national government has got strategic priorities, or, or you look at the Millennium Goals, you know those? Mm. You are not going to achieve that this year, or next year, or the year after next year. Not even in the next five years. Those things are so big. If you want to say, I want to improve the quality of life of people in this community, or I want to improve access to education, you can't do that in one or two years. You've got to do so many other little things that will eventually lead to that improvement. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you can't measure it. It just means it takes longer. <laughs> so it means you can't always report on it this year. You can report on outputs and you can report on outcomes, but on the impacts, you've sometimes got to wait five to 10 years <coughs> before you can really get measurables to say, it used to be that, now it's this. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and this that you're talking about now is what makes innovations in the public sector so absolutely different from innovations anywhere else because the bureaucracy takes a long time to turn and not everything that you deliver is something that's a product. You know, like you, you're like you can buy it in a shop. It's not quick. A lot of the things you do take lots of negotiation and lots of participatory processes and lots of decision-making forums before it even gets to a point where you can start implementing. So we have different kinds of innovations in the public sector and we look for that improvement or we look for that added value in different time periods and we measure them in different ways. The way you measure output innovations is different to the way you measure outcome innovations, which is different to the way you measure impact innovations. Does that sound fair? Mm. Right, so I'm hoping in the back of your mind while I'm doing all this talking, talking, talking and I'm checking my watch for tea time, that some of the things that you do every day are starting to sound to you like they could be innovations. You with me? Like your normal daily job, what you've been doing for the last, I don't know, however many years, that you can think, well, that's probably an impact kind of innovation, or that's probably an outcome kind of innovation, or that's, that's an improvement, or that's efficiency. And then you're going, okay, so I have been involved with innovations somehow, somehow. I just didn't always call it an innovation. You with me? Okay. And where I started talking about this was that you have to measure. One of the criteria that we often have to disqualify uh, sort of projects that nominate themselves at our awards, our national awards program, is we say to them, you started measuring too late. And when you measure too late, you, you're not giving me enough evidence of the big difference that you've made. When you start an innovation, you've got to start measuring early so that you almost get all the, all the, the, bad, the badness of the current problem, you've got it measured so that you can get good comparisons when you're, when you're starting to have an impact. Does that sound fair? All right, I hope so. So I'm gonna ask my question one last time and then we're gonna wrap up for tea. 
When I say the word innovation, when I say the word innovation, what comes to mind? The way you think about the problem can't be the same way you were thinking when, when the problem was made. Mm. Not just you as an individual, whoever was involved. If you use the same leadership style, if you use the same competencies, if you use the same meeting, if you use the same room, if you use the same people, you are going to come up with the same problems. <laughs> You've got to use new blood, or a different methodology, or a different timeline, or a new person, or different expertise, or compare yourself to something else, or benchmark, but you must do something that's different. It almost must rattle the cage a little bit. I don't mean it must be radical, I just mean it must be different. Sometimes people say, well, why do you want to change things? What's the problem? Okay. And this brings a number of elements to mind. We'll go into them later in the day, but let me just clarify. The first thing is, you shouldn't be changing it if there isn't a big problem. So you don't scratch where it's not itching. Do you know that? <laughs> okay. That's this issue about improvement and innovation. If your innovation isn't going to make a huge big difference, don't do it. Because it's just a lot of hot air for nothing. All right. But if this old person that's been there for 20 years says, why are you wanting to do it differently? I've been doing it like this for 20 years. Don't mess me around. And you can actually answer that person and say, because when you do it this way, we can only do so many applications a month. When we do it this way, we can do a thousand more applications a month. Then you are answering me what the difference could be if we innovate. And as soon as you can give me that answer, you're telling me what the improvement could be, and you're able to measure. If you can't answer that question, you shouldn't be doing the innovation.